Hi everyone, it's Mahina. Welcome to Imagine Adventures podcast. Okay, so today I would like to address a question that um, I've been asked by my clients, friends and even family members over the years. How do you change how you feel? Actually, can you change how you feel? Well, the answer is yes, and you can change how you feel, but how do you do it? So if you had told me 10 years ago that I could change how I felt, um, I would have told you, well, no, this is not possible. I would have been adamant that you cannot change people's feelings because after all, if something bad happens to you or to us, isn't it natural to feel hurt, sad, anxious, frustrated, or even angry? Well, the answer is yes and no. Um, I believe that our feelings are definitely here for a reason. Um, I call that our emotional compass. Um, emotions are here to guide us in everything that we do in life. Um, this is why, you know, when we hang out with people um, that make us feel good, we want to stay uh, with them and spend more time with them. And when we feel bad or awkward about meeting this or that person, we tend to avoid them. So this is also why we feel stressed anxious um, or nervous when we wake up every day when we do a job that we hate and uh, so this is basically our internal compass letting us know that something needs to change um, so it can be that we need to address some confidence issues um, we may have low self-esteem it may be a new job maybe we feel uncomfortable but we may also need to ask um, our boss for more explanations um, about an upcoming project, or we may just simply want to change career altogether. Um, in relationships, while the other person is definitely not responsible for our feelings, because no one really is, um, however, if someone bel belittles us, or you know, when, when we meet up after work at home and your partner makes you feel sad or bad about yourself, or you know, they, they give you um, or they tell you things that are not necessarily loving, it could be a sign here as well that things need to change. Um, so perhaps you haven't been spending much time with your partner recently and you're going apart. Or maybe, the, you know, the feelings that you have for each other have changed. Or it may be that um, a situation has changed. Um, you know, you've moved to a new house or a new town. And it's causing stress for both um, partners. But um, both people handle it differently. So either way, though, it doesn't, if it doesn't feel good, there's usually a good reason why. And we know that deep down. We know that this is what emotions are here for. A lot of people tend to avoid facing their emotions, but when you really do, you really realize that, okay, so, um, you know, this is what I need to do. I keep telling people to check in with um, their emotional compass once in a while, because if it makes you feel excited to do it, um, then do it. But if something's make you feel, making you feel scared, I would say do it anyway because there's a high chance that you're terrified because you you know what you really want to do or to get um, if you do it and you get it you know that once you have it and once you've done it you're going to feel amazing about it this is usually um, when we feel terrified but if we are depressed um, normally we are it's an accumulation of things and we tend to be very um, overwhelmed and it's basically um, our body telling us that we need to let our body, mind and spirit rest deeply. Depression, deep rest, okay? And um, yeah, and the only other emotion that I think is very important to listen to is um, when we feel disgusted by something or we, we just feel appalled by something. And when that happens, I would say simply walk away from that situation. It's not meant for you. So now, while we all have those emotions um, and while we know that they're here to guide us, we also have the power to change them. And this ability, this power is actually um, it's very powerful and it has extraordinary benefits. So what are those benefits? Well, imagine something terrible happens to you and you're able to maintain a positive emotion throughout. This means that you will most likely be able to overcome that obstacle or that situation much more quickly, much more um, easily um, 
and in a way that you'll be able to look back on it and think about maybe how it made you grow um, you know and, and the lesson that you've learned from that because let's face it this is what life is all about okay it is putting challenges on our path and um, but it is doing that so that we can overcome those challenges one after the other and as we do that you know it's like climbing a stair of stones um, you know each stone that you step on um, allows you to grow and expand and basically you get to higher and higher ground and you become the person you change every time you step on a new stone and you become the person that you were really meant to be so but how do you change your emotions okay so you know how do you feel good no matter what now, I'm not saying that you'll be feeling super excited when a loved one passes on to the next world, okay? And I'm not saying either that you'll be jumping for joy when your partner leaves you, if that happens. Of course not. But you will become a much more resilient person because you will be able to realize two things. One, how you feel doesn't have anything to do with what's happening around you. And it doesn't have anything to do with the people in your life either. Two, you have full control over how you feel. This is something that um, we're not being told. We don't know. But let's think of, um, let's use a train analogy. You are the train, all right? And your heart is the machine, the engine. Now your emotions, um, they are the coal. And... The fire that results from burning that coal is basically your attitude um, towards life. So you can fuel your train with any emotion, but the more emotions or feelings or coal basically that you add, the faster the train you will, will go. So the stronger you will become. It goes both ways though, okay? So you can fuel your train with anger or you can fuel it with peace and love. A lot of people find it easier to fill it with anger, but um, I'm here to tell you that the more you fill it with peace and love, the happier you'll become. And we're all reasonable people here who aspire to feeling happy, right? So let's say your train's coal, um, or your, your engine, is growing cold at the moment because a lot has been happening in your life and this has all been leaving you um, exhausted and the fire is almost extinguished. So how do you light it up again? I'm going to give you a personal trick that works for me every single time. It's simple, it's easy, and it's very powerful. Okay, so simply close your eyes for a second, if you can, and choose one of two emotions, either love or gratitude, whatever comes to you um, more easily. You can then practice this exercise um, and have a different image for each feeling. But let's say we pick um, gratitude, okay? Now, choose, go back into your memory and pick one memory that only makes you feel gratitude when you think about it. And then you take a, a mental screenshot of that memory in your mind. Now, when you do that, I don't want you to choose a memory that is also associated with pain. So for example, if you take the, your first kiss um, and you remember how grateful you felt um, to be feeling so loved and so loving towards your first high school sweetheart, um, but obviously you may not be with him or her anymore and so the memory may also be associated with loss. So don't shoot a memory like that. Shoot a very powerful but neutral memory. Um, animals are great for that. I'm going to give you the example, um, well, I'm going to give you the, the memory that I choose and that I use all the time. So when I worked at a luxury lodge in Africa, um, we were very lucky, but we had elephants um, that would come through our reception. And there was one very special boy um, whom everyone called George, and George would hang around um, the lodge a lot. And one day I was on the library deck on my own and he came right beside it. So the deck was higher than the elephant, so I was very safe, but I was really close to the elephant too. And he was just munching away happily, um, just grabbing some branches. But at some point he raised his head and um, George and I locked eyes. And so 
when I looked into his eyes, I totally melted and I just saw the, oh my God, the intelligence, the kindness, the pure love, heart, just the, the, the pure soul, the, the simple fact that he was being, he was living, he was happy there. Um, and everything was reflected in his eyes and it felt that I connected with this elephant. Um, so it only lasted seconds, but it's such a powerful memory. And it's not associated with any negative feelings because, um, you know, I had a great time living there and I'm very happy where I am now. And, uh, and yeah, and that day was just wonderful. So I, this is a memory that I pick for every, um, every time that I think about, um, you know, every time that I, I have something that goes a bit wrong or every time I feel down, I pick this memory. Um, because I feel so overwhelmed with um, love and gratitude when I think about it. So I want you to pick a memory that is just like that. Then once you've got it, so just take some time, pick a really good memory, okay? A very powerful memory. Now once you've got it, practice seeing it in your mind. So you can choose random times of the day. I would even suggest to put an alarm on your phone, maybe three or four times a day for about a week. And every time you have that alarm ringing, several times a day, just randomly summon that memory in your mind. Make sure it's super clear. Make sure that it has a lot of details, but also make sure that it never changes. The colors, uh, you know, don't, don't play with it too much. Just make sure it doesn't change. It stays consistent. Then you practice the emotion that this memory um, sparks within you or that you associate with this memory. So if it's love or, or gratitude, you um, picture that memory and then you let the emotion, that sensation, fill you up completely for one to five minutes every single day. If you can do it when that alarm um, rings and do it. And, but most importantly, at least do it um, as soon as you wake up and before you go to sleep. Okay, so you bring up that memory in your mind, you feel what you felt when that um, moment happened and you let that feeling fill you up. You focus on the image and you just focus on the feeling. After a while, if you're very consistent with this, um, you will be able, you'll find that you'll be able to cement that image um, and that the emotion will automatically follow wherever and whenever you are. This is great because even, even when you're faced with um, difficult situations, you will be able to summon it. And it will just like remind you of the good emotions that you felt that day, the day of um, the memory that you picked. And after another while, you know, after you've practiced it again and again and again, you will become able to just summon the feeling. Um, so the memory or the image doesn't necessarily have to be associated with it anymore. Um, when that happens, you can start thinking of this feeling as um, a little flame that burns and grows in your chest. So um, after a while, you just, you know, you choose to do the same exercise. You choose to randomly feel love or gratitude during the day. But instead of um, picturing that memory, you picture a little flame within your chest, in the center of your chest. And, um, you know, you feel more and more love, more and more gratitude. And as you do, you picture that flame growing bigger and bigger and your chest feeling warmer and warmer. Okay. So the key here, again, is to be consistent um, and to practice this every day. I'm very uh, adamant on this because you won't realize this now. Um, it, it's not something that I can tell you and you will be like, oh, yes, this is what's going to happen. You really have to experience it for yourself to see how powerful it is. Um, personally, I worked at it relentlessly um, for years and I can say now that it has definitely changed my life. Um, this is one of the, the things that I practice um, as a manif quantum manifestation coach with my clients. And, um, and it definitely has incredible benefits, okay? It's um, one of these incredible benefits, basically, is um, that as soon as you s are able to summon that feeling, the more you do it, um, 
it becomes easy and natural, but you instantly raise your vibration. Okay, and for all of you who know about the law of attraction and manifestation and of the law of uh, vibration, then you know that um, this contributes to attracting positive people and situations into your life. It can happen very quickly and it's very powerful. And also, um, when you do that, when you're able to summon um, any emotion that you want, uh, any feelings and change, literally change your emotions, you, um, you take a quantum leap, okay? So you're jumping from one state of mind, one world, one dimension of grief, loss, frustration or anger to another one that's full of light, love, joy and gratitude. So you've just taken a quantum leap. So in both cases, this is just such a powerful exercise. So yes, you can change how you feel. And I've just told you how. <laughs> um, but um, yes, it is not something that we are taught. And like many things in life, it does take practice. But I mean, seriously, the, good, the amazing part of this exercise is that you can do it anywhere, anytime. And it makes you feel good to do it. You know, it doesn't take long. Um, you can be sitting down, you can be lying down, you can be, um, you know, up in a bus, um, you can be on your way or in the queue waiting to go to the doctor, whatever. You can do this anywhere and anytime. And um, the more you do it, when you do it again and again and again and again, it will become second nature to you. And it's just such a beautiful trick. Um, and, and I mean, I cannot tell you how it will also be changing your entire vibration your entire uh, mindset you will become a more positive person um, you will be attracting very quickly more and more positive things in your life um, so definitely do it and I personally recommend if you have children that you um, talk to your children about it and maybe teach them this little trick um, and technique because Yes, we should always remember emotions are here to guide us. So don't discard, you know, if you feel awkward, if you feel really scared, really disgusted by something, realize that something may need to change in your life. Um, don't use that technique to be in denial or to just avoid facing the truth. Face your emotions, understand what they mean, um, change the thing that needs to be changed. But when um, things happen that are completely outside your, con your control, rather than being consumed by, say, hatred or feeling um, totally at loss or depressed or, you know, COVID didn't help on that. So every time you feel really down, whatever, being able to shift um, your emotional state is very important. And for children as well, it's very important to teach them that. You know, to teach them that, okay, so this, uh, or this is why you feel that emotion. Now, let's get you to a happier state. And, you know, have them choose one memory and associate it in the same way to something good. can be very, um, very important thing to do. I mean, to me, it's, um, it's part of why why we feel. And um, it's also what is going to help us as, um, as a community of human beings to, um, to live in a more peaceful and more beautiful world. Um, you know, let's not forget that, yes, we feel good when we are in nature and we see beautiful things around us um, and we don't feel so good when we're surrounded by, you know, uh, well, when we watch the news and we see everything that goes wrong in the world. Um, but you can, you always have a choice, okay? You can choose to turn the news off and go in nature but you can also choose to be in your apartment and um, quantum leap anywhere you want and you know choose to feel gratitude and love at any time of the day and again the more you do it the easier it will become and you know the more you do it the more your life will change for the better so I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this podcast um, countless blessings your way everyone and um, have a beautiful beautiful um, upcoming weekend and I will be talking to you next week <laughs>